Okay, again, the three great centers. Here's a reading given uh, where he's recommending using the wet cell battery. Are you familiar with the wet cell battery where you have the copper disc that goes along the spine usually and the large nickel disc over the abdomen that brings the vibration into the system? In this particular case, he's saying usually he'll recommend sticking with the center for a certain solution during a session. In this particular one, he said uh, take this small plate uh, to the third cervical and the next day to the ninth dorsal and the next day on the fourth lumbar. So he's hitting all three of these major centers. Okay, 3676-1, same reading. He said these are the three centers through which there is activity of the kundalini forces, this life force vibratory energy of the body through these three centers that act as suggestions to the spiritual forces through dis for distribution through the seven centers of the body. So again, we have a hierarchy of centers here. You've got these three main centers which, by the way, more often than not, it's these three centers where he's attaching the wet cell. These are the three centers where he's saying, telling the osteopath to coordinate these centers. These, one of these centers will be where you're going to, have to do the laying on of hands and put the vibratory magnetic forces in the body. You're going to have one of your hands usually on one of these centers and so forth and so on. So these are real important centers, and you'll find them in different contexts. Here's where they are. And with regard to the wet cell, so you've got the, these three main spinal centers and the, uh, the lacteal duct plexus there on the front of the body. When we talked about the, the electronic, vibratory, atomic forces of the body and assimilating those vibrations, that seems to be what we're tapping in here with this, this large plate on the abdomen, on the front side of the body. And he takes it back to the fetus, the mother, gestation, when the fetus is forming in the womb. The vibration, not only is the blood and nutrients coming in through the umbilical cord, but he says the mental body of the, of the mother is feeding vibration and impulse of the mental body into this umbilical center. So while the fetus is, therefore he says, the thoughts that the mother have, the, the fetus can end up with an extra thumb or toe or, or being missing one because of what's coming through. It's that powerful, this influence of the mental body, not just the, the blood and so forth, but the mental body th into the abdomen, the solar plexus brain, this vib vibratory center in the abdomen. He says the umbilical cord is cut, but he says then the function moves more to this brain and what he called the um, Leiden center and operates then. But he says this abdominal connection is still there. It's just running in the background. This abdominal brain, this atomic vibratory part of the system that's, that initially created the body through the mother's impulse, it's still there, running in the background. And presumably that's what we're tapping into here. So what he's almost talking about, when you're using this type of technology to regenerate the body, rebuild the nervous system or whatever you're doing, he seems to be putting the body back into the mode that created the body in the first place, the energy pattern of, of when the energy's coming in from the umbilicus, from that center, and being distributed through the system. It's almost like now we talk about fetal cells and fetal tissue research. It uses very primitive fetal tissue that can, it's so undifferentiated, it's so primitive, it's the first tissue that forms that can form almost anything. It's so primitive that it hasn't really uh, become specific tissue like heart or lungs or nerve or anything. It's, it can become anything. It's the first tissue, this fetal tissue. And what he seems to be saying, well, rather than using the tissue, let's put the body in the energy pattern that was operating at that time when everything was created and see if we can rebuild or regenerate the system. My understanding, that's basically what he's talking about. That's the significance of this lacteal duct plexus. And he says the food that's passing through there, yes, you're, you're uh, assimilating nutrients physically, but also there's a vibratory aspect that you're assimilating. And when we talk about epilepsy later, he says the adhesions in the lacteal duct plexus, more often than not, is the source of the brain seizures in epilepsy. When your consciousness gets disconnected, particularly, or your consciousness gets altered, it's because of adhesions in the lacteal duct plexus. We'll come back to that. Remember this picture when we talk about